Imagine this, you've got a table of start and end dates for different employees, some spans across multiple months, even years. And you need to count how many working days each person worked each month in 2024, for example. Let's make Power Query do all the hard work. We'll load it into Power Query, data, firm table range. Each row currently shows multiple names. That's a problem. If we leave them bunched together, we can't count days per person. We'll fix it by splitting the employees column. Split column by delimiter. We will use a custom delimiter, a comma followed by the space, and expand to the new rows. Now each employee has their own row with the start and end date. That's crucial for individual counts later. Each row shows just a date range, but to count how many days someone worked, we first need to break that range into actual individual dates. We'll use a custom column to create a list of all dates between from date value and to date value. I will use list dates function. The first argument ensures the start value is a date type, not date time, and it becomes the start of the list. The second argument is a duration. Duration days function converts the duration into a number of days. Plus one includes the end date itself, otherwise it would stop the day before. And the third argument defines the step size between list elements. One day, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. So it will increment by one day each time. Basically it means make a list starting at from date with n days between from date and to date, stepping one day at a time. But we don't want weekends and we don't want other rows creeping in. So we wrap it in list select function to filter out anything not in 2024 or that falls on Saturday and Sunday. So I will type each date year underscore symbol equals 2024 and date day of week underscore one less than five. It keeps only Monday to Friday. One means week starts on Monday. At this point, every employee has a list of just working days in 2024. Next, we'll expand those lists, so each individual date gets its own row. This is what lets Power Query count them properly later. But now comes a little trick. We need to group these days by months. But if we convert them to month names right now, Power Query will sort them alphabetically when we pivot. So instead we convert them to the first day of their months. This gives us proper month order. And later we'll turn those dates into month names, only after everything is sorted correctly. Let's drop the old from date column. It's done its job. Now we pivot. Rows are our month column, columns are our employee column, and the values is count of dates. Power Query counts how many 2024 working days each person had in each month. Let's make sure employee names are sorted alphabetically. We will get rid of all null values in the first column, just remove them. And now we can safely convert those month dates into month names. This time it's fine, because we've already sorted everything correctly underneath. And here is the result. Clean, clear, month by month totals of working days for each employee, for 2024 only. No more guessing or manual counting. Power Query slides through date ranges filtered only 2024 weekdays and line them up beautifully by months. 
If this was helpful, give it a like. See ya.